nice when you have a barber shop that's closed down because of this virus, but they'll come right to your house. So it's good to have good friends that are also your barber, which made everything much easier for today. But now I'm going to another company that's in my area. He's probably one of the biggest companies in my area and he has topsoil which i need to fix plow damage so that's what's on the agenda for today i have to go there he says that he has tons of topsoil and he's gonna sell me a yard of it which is gonna make things really nice because nobody else in my area has any topsoil so i'm gonna go pick up a yard of topsoil from him and go around and get this plow damage fixed that's one thing I wanted to touch on that I wanted to mention in a lot of other videos. I've heard other people talk about it and working with other companies in your area. Now, you can compete with all these other companies and you know, you're always competing with other companies, but if you get along with them, you can help each other and it makes such a huge difference. Like in this instance right here, there's nobody in my area that has topsoil and I need to get this stuff done. And I was talking to him the other day and he told me, I have topsoil, if you need it, come and get it. So, you know, working with other companies, whether they're bigger than you, smaller than you, same size as you, it doesn't really matter get along with other companies in your area and you can help each other out. Like I've sent them a bunch of work and when I mentioned in that video, a couple videos back about bidding properties and a, that huge property that uh, um, with all those new condos that I said was just way too big for me and I referred them to somebody else. This company I'm going to to get topsoil from is the company that I referred them to. So, you know, we're always helping each other out and it makes such a huge difference. It makes life easier on all of us and it helps us all to, uh, to keep getting more work and to stay in business. So I highly suggest that you guys find companies in your area that you can work with and help each other out. So I figure I'll cover this part while I'm walking around picking up plow markers. So I went and picked up that yard of topsoil from uh, that other lawn care company, which is a good friend of mine, actually. Um, and his company is just massive. It was, I don't know when it was started. I would say 70s, 80s maybe by his dad. And him and his brother have taken it over since. I think his dad still works, but you know how us landscapers are. Once you start working, you never stop, right? So, so I go and pick up that topsoil and I go around and I start fixing plow damage. I get about four of them done. And then I'm pulling off this one street and 
my truck starts spitting and sputtering like crazy. Like it just, anytime I hit the gas, it was trying to like choke out like it was starving for fuel. So first thing I thought was fuel pump. And then I was thinking, no, I just replaced that last year. Fuel pump should still be good. So I was like, well, it's gotta be the fuel filter. It's probably been about two years since I've changed that. So I, I'm thinking no big deal. I just gotta get back home. And then once I get home, I'll take the other truck and I'll run up and get a fuel filter. Then, so I start, uh, I start heading back home and um, it's barely even going. And I'm riding the shoulder of the road. I got tractor trailers behind me. I'm trying to pull over so they can go by. And it's just uh, spitting and sparring like crazy. Anytime I try to give it a little bit more gas, it's just trying to die out. So I'm about five and a half miles from my house and I, um, I'm just coasting. I'm pretty much idling it because when I idle, it's the only time the truck will go without acting like or trying to die out. So I finally get just about home. I turn onto my street, which is a hill down, down into my, um, into the connecting street and then right into my driveway and the truck shuts off. I'm like, great. So I'm rolling I'm, I'm like, please just let me get in my driveway. Just as uh, I turn into my driveway, I put it in neutral. I turn the key to start it. It backfires like there's no freaking tomorrow. And the truck starts right up. I rev it up. It's running perfectly fine. So I'm like, all right. Well, I realize my other truck is in the shop and it's not at my house and my wife's at work. So I call a friend of mine. He comes and picks me up, takes me up to get a fuel filter. I get back home, crawl underneath the truck, change out the fuel filter, start it up, let it run for about 10 minutes, running great. So now I just came back out and did a couple more. And I have a whole list to go still. And uh, I don't have that much plow damage, a lot less than I thought I had, but I'm picking up plow markers at all my accounts before they throw them away, which has happened to me in the past. But uh, it seems to be running really good now, so hopefully that's all it was and we'll continue on. But it's always something. Just gotta keep moving on. Just don't let it get to you. Keep, keep plugging along, keep going with it. So that's it for today. I'm glad that is done. It's such a tedious job. And, uh, but fixing plow damage is something you got to do. If you're a reputable company, you just do it. You know what I mean? Some guys don't do it or they charge extra for it, which I think is a bunch of shit because you did the damage and it's not the customer's fault. So I think you should just fix it. But you know, altogether, I, I spent $35 on a yard of topsoil and I think I spent 50 on a bag of grassy, 55 on a bag of grassy. A lot of you guys have asked, you've seen me use it in the past. This is what I use. It's by Groundwork, and this is the seed. It's called Fast Lawn Grass Seed Mixture. 99.9% .9 weed free, guaranteed to grow. Um, and this bag covers up to 35,000 square foot, minimal care, light green color, partial sun exposure. Um, I buy it at Tractor Supply. And the reason I started using this is because I need some grass seed in a hurry um, last year, and I, uh, it was the only place open so I had to go there and get it and I had to rototill this front patch where Ryan and I took a flower bed I think I made a video on it We took a flower bed out and when we got done because we didn't have the extra topsoil It was still like kind of clumpy there and we raked it out as best we could We tilled it like seven eight times and we threw it on there and threw up a Hail Mary and within it for like a week and a half straight It just looked like dirt and then over a period of one week, we got a bunch of rain. That grass grew up like there was no tomorrow. It grew up thick, nice, bright green. I mean, it was just, it was out of control. I didn't think nothing would ever grow there. I thought for sure we're gonna have to go back, dig it all out, level it out with new topsoil. What an amazing lawn it turned out to be. So ever since then, I've been using that stuff. It's awesome. But uh, that'll be it for today, guys. Please hit that subscribe button. Um, I just peaked over 7,000 subs, which I never thought would happen. I'm super excited about that and super thankful to all you guys. But uh, that's the end of that for today. There was so many people out uh, walking, jogging, kids playing in the street. I saw landscape companies out doing spring cleanups all over the place. I saw two companies mowing yards. I'm excited. It's here. Um, what a beautiful day. It's supposed to rain over the next two days, so maybe we'll dive into that aerator back there and that wiring, that electrical. Still waiting on parts for that, but uh, yeah, a lot of big things coming, and I will have a lot more outside footage coming real soon. Thanks, guys. As always, see you in the next one.